Russia is known for developing high-tech weapons. The skies above Ukraine are becoming increasingly crowded. And the Russians and the Chinese appear to have a bit of an edge over the Americans. Russia has been accelerating its efforts to develop new and dangerous weapons in the face of rising tensions. The country has announced various new high-tech weapons over the past five years, such as the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle, the Kinzhal air-launched ballistic missile, and the Poseidon nuclear-powered torpedo. These weapons are designed to evade or overwhelm existing missile defenses and deliver devastating strikes on strategic targets. But now, Russia has revealed that it is testing a new weapon that could change the face of nuclear warfare. What is this weapon and just how dangerous is it? Join us as we discuss how Russia just powered up a giant laser and how they plan to use it. Sarov, a town that is closed to the public, located about 350 kilometers east of Moscow and Russia, is home to a secret project that aims to ensure the reliability and safety of Russia's nuclear arsenal for the future. The project involves the construction of a massive laser facility, which is 10 stories high and covers an area equivalent to two football fields. The official name of the facility is UFL-2M, but has been nicknamed the Tsar Laser by the Russian media because it will be the most powerful laser in the world when it's completed. The SAR laser belongs to a class of high-energy lasers that can produce intense beams of light that can heat up and compress atoms to trigger nuclear reactions. These lasers can be used to simulate the conditions that occur when a nuclear weapon explodes. By using small samples of material, either from research or from existing nuclear weapons, scientists can create miniature explosions and measure their effects. This way, they can test how a real nuclear bomb would perform under different scenarios. For example, they can check if an old warhead still works as expected or if it needs to be replaced or upgraded. Using lasers for testing has the advantage of avoiding actual nuclear detonations, which are banned by international treaties and have harmful environmental and political consequences. According to Jeffrey Lewis, a nuclear non-proliferation researcher at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies in California, it's a substantial investment by the Russians in their nuclear weapons. Russia is the only major nuclear power that does not have a high-energy laser facility yet, but that is about to change with this new project. Other countries have already built their own high-energy laser facilities. The United States has the National Ignition Facility, which is currently the world's most energetic laser system. It has 192 separate beams that can deliver 1.8 megajoules of energy. A megajoule is not a very large amount of energy. It is equivalent to 240 food calories, similar to a light meal. However, concentrating this energy into a tiny area can create very high temperatures and pressures. France has the Laser Megajoule, which has 80 beams that can deliver 350 kilojoules of energy right now, but it plans to have 176 beams that can deliver 1.3 megajoules of energy by 2026. The UK has the Orion Laser, which produces 5 kilojoules of energy. China has the SG-3 laser, which produces 180 kilojoules of energy. The SAR laser will surpass them all when it is completed. It will also have 192 beams, but with a higher combined output of 2.8 megajoules of energy. However, the project is not finished yet. Only its first stage has been launched so far. At a meeting of the Russian Academy of Sciences in December of 2022, an official revealed that the laser has 64 beams in its current state. Their total output is 128 kilojoules of energy, which is only 6% of the planned final capability. The next step would be testing them, the official said. One of the goals of building lasers that can cause nuclear reactions is to make them as large as possible. According to Stefano Azzini, a physicist at the University of Rome, Italy, the larger, the better. Larger facilities can produce higher energies, which means that they can create more extreme conditions for the materials that they test. They can heat up or compress the materials to higher temperatures or pressures, or they can test larger volumes of material. 
by expanding the limits of experiments, nuclear researchers can obtain more useful data for their studies. These experiments involve using lasers to blast their target material into a state of matter called plasma. Plasma is different from gases, solids, and liquids because in plasma, the electrons are not bound to their atom's nuclei, but they move freely. The plasmas emit electromagnetic radiation, such as flashes of light and x-rays, and particles like electrons and neutrons. The lasers also need detection equipment that can record when and where these events happen. These measurements then allow scientists to estimate how a full warhead might behave in a real explosion. The lasers that can cause nuclear reactions are very powerful in complex devices. They need many components and systems to work together, such as laser amplifiers, mirrors, lenses, beam splitters, target chambers, diagnostics, and control systems. They also need a lot of energy to operate, which usually comes from electric power plants or capacitors. The lasers have to be carefully designed and calibrated to ensure that they deliver the right amount and quality of energy to the target materials. The lasers also have to be maintained and upgraded regularly to keep them in good condition and improve their performance. So far, Russia's lack of such a laser hasn't been a great disadvantage in ensuing its weapons function. That's because Russia keeps making new explosive cores for its nuclear weapons. These cores are called pits because they are hard, like the center of some fruit. If you can replace old pits with new ones, you don't have to use lasers to check how much they have changed over the years. In the US, we would be making new nuclear weapons too, but we don't have the ability to produce many pits, says Lewis. The biggest US place that made pits in Rocky Flats, Colorado closed in 1992. Scientists have used lasers to test nuclear weapons for a long time. They started using them in the 1970s. At first, they used them together with real tests of nuclear weapons underground. They used data from both to make models of how plasma behaves. Plasma is a state of matter where electrons are free from atoms. But after the U.S. stopped testing nuclear weapons for real in 1992, it changed to using computer simulations of warheads exploding to check their safety and reliability. The U.S. did this because it wanted to agree on a treaty that bans nuclear tests. The United States and other countries using this method still had to physically test some nuclear materials with lasers to ensure their computer models matched real-world results and that their nuclear weapons remained effective. This testing continues today. However, these systems are not flawless. According to Wadzini, the models used to predict how weapons behave are not entirely accurate. There are several reasons for this. One reason is that simulating plasma is extremely difficult. Another challenge arises from plutonium, which behaves uniquely among metals. When heated, plutonium goes through six different solid forms before it melts, and each form occupies a significantly different volume. Despite these challenges, laser experiments are currently the best way to predict the performance of nuclear weapons. The United States completed the National Ignition Facility in 2009 and began using its lasers on tiny plutonium targets in 2015. This advancement allowed scientists to gain a better understanding of what happens inside a nuclear weapon than ever before. Laser experiments are not only valuable for understanding how materials near the radioactive cores of nuclear warheads degrade and react over their lengthy lifetimes, but they also provide insights into how these materials perform under the extreme conditions of a nuclear detonation. According to Vladimir Tikonchuk, an emeritus professor at the Center for Intense Lasers and Applications at the University of Bordeaux, France, such experiments are essential for designing and engineering nuclear weapons components. Tikonchuk has been closely monitoring the progress of the SAR laser since it was initially announced in 2012 and first presented at a conference in 2013. His most recent interaction with scientists from Sarov occurred at a summer school in nearby Nizhny Novgorod in 2019. However, he remains skeptical about whether Russia will successfully complete the laser project. Russia has a strong scientific background to support its capabilities. For instance, the country has a history of collaborating on significant scientific projects, 
such as the multi-billion dollar ITER experimental nuclear fusion reactor located in Cotarache, France. Additionally, Russia has contributed key components to two facilities in Germany, the European X-ray Free Electron Laser in Hamburg and the Facility for Anti-Proton and Ion Research in Darmstadt. Moreover, scientists at Russia's Institute of Applied Physics have developed fast crystal growth technology, which is not only used in the lenses at the National Ignition Facility, but also in the construction of large-scale lasers, as noted by Tikonchuk. According to Lewis, the fact that Russia is developing the SAR laser indicates it wants to maintain its nuclear stockpile. He said, it's a sign that they plan for these things to be around for a long time, which is not great. He also said, I'm quite worried that the US, Russia, and China are going to resume explosive testing. What do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section.